guys, welcome to this week's episode of the Penny Lane Podcast with Rob Smith. This is a high energy, high entertainment podcast, and it feels appropriate to say buckle up because you're in for a wild ride. The stock market is hotter than ever right now, and traders are taking advantage. But what does that mean for the people who still haven't started trading? The market can be a little intimidating at first, but you don't have to be alone in the learning experience. We at the Pennies Going In Raw podcast are here to help you. I'm Dan, and with my co-host, Hugh Henney, we make the stock market a fun but informative experience for our listeners. We offer knowledge for all levels of traders, from beginners to those who do it full-time. On PGIR, we discuss up-to-date news about the stock market and interview other traders who all started out just like us and made it big. You'll hear from Hugh and other multi-millionaire traders, founders and CEOs of companies, Fintwit superstars, and even professional athletes. Have you ever thought about investing your hard-earned cash but don't know where to start? Do you have money just sitting in your savings account collecting dust? We were all there once, too. Listen to Pennies Going In Raw on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Rob, hi. Welcome to the Penny Lane Podcast. Thank you so much. I've been looking forward to this ever since you asked me. Uh, you know, I always like to talk about the strat, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's always great when somebody wants to hear about it and says, would you come on? And I always say, yes. <laughs> Well, we appreciate that, and we have been um, hearing a lot about the Strat. A lot of your protégés have been on the podcast, and I thought it was time to go to the source. Great. That's fantastic. You know, and think, as a matter of fact, uh, today is the third anniversary of when I met Sarah, and she's done so well for so many people, and she came to me and she said, I want to be a trader more than anything else. I'm like, oh, I've heard that one a million times. I'm like, I was like, and, but she stuck with it. She listened to me three years in. She has more followers than me. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, what's up with that? I'm like, well, because Rob, you speak too fast. You expect everybody to know everything. He's like, slows it down. I'm like, so that's one of the like, great credits of my, of my work, I, I believe, is that if you can have it, if you can be a teacher and have somebody become a teacher, it has more followers than you. I mean, that, that's good work. So today is a happy anniversary of third anniversary with me and Sarah and uh, really happy about that. And um, you know, one of the most important things that I talk about is that most traders lose. People who set out to trade for a living lose. That's it. And I'm like 90% of them. And one of the goals has been to re- turn that around. Turn that around. Why? I mean, there's so much information on how to make money trading. Why does everybody lose? And uh, so, yeah, so happy anniversary, me and Sarah, and um, great to be here. But that's that's one of the main things that I can say about day trading and trading is that most people lose, right? Almost everybody who sets out to do this for a living loses. I've been here 32 years, and I've seen it. And so what we're trying to do is turn that around, right? Turn that around. I'm like, I mean, when, if, if you know if you, when you start trading, and if you ever told anybody, oh, I want to be a day trader, everyone assumes you're going to lose because they know you probably are. Right? <laughs> they know you probably are. Like, oh, you're going to lose all your money. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to do this for a living. Mm, probably not. And they're usually right. So... Uh, I wanted to start off with that, that uh, most people lose, and there's a reason for that, you know, that, that most people don't understand how price action works, and that's that's really the, the road I've gone down is to understand, teach people how price action works. So let's start off with that. Before we go any further, I got to ask you two questions. One, b- during the pre-show, you had a jacket on. That we were chatting about. Yeah, let's get about. that jacket yeah. back on for the. For can the we get the jacket back in here? And then two, can you take us on a tour of the pictures that are on your walls? And I need to understand who okay, these so fellows this, are. This here was my great grandfather, and so um, he uh, is he yeah, Mr. Yeah. Rockefeller? No, that's what he looks like. Charles Goodman. So we used to be the largest logging firm in the Midwest. And Sawyer Goodman Logging Firm up in Goodman, Wisconsin. And 
Oh, the town we is also the town. Okay. And <laughs> in those days, we paid people in Goodman dollars. So you would work for the company. We'd pay you in Goodman dollars. You'd pay us rent. You'd pay us utilities. And you'd go to the company store. I was like... Isn't that a monopoly? Yeah, no, I was like, who messed that up? I'm like, I, 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 I don't have that, you know. I'm like, well, I'll it. but uh, that's who that is. And um, so we've got some pictures here. I've got the American Stock Exchange by uh, Leroy Neiman over here. My dad was an art collector, so I've got a lot of that. And here's here's just something pretty cool. I'll take this off. Come on. What are we about to see here, Justin? <laughs> You can see that. I have no oh, idea. These are all my from the wall. Oops. These are all my yeah, it's got a little reflection. My father's badges uh, from starting on the CBOE in 1975. And yeah. that's when you have this jacket here wow. when he started there. And also I've got another jacket here you might want to see that I want to see it. That my father at Merrill Lynch, he founded using the yellow jackets and they used them on global markets because it made it easier to see the traders to see in the pits. So now your dad founded Merrill Lynch. He did Lynch. not found Merrill Lynch, but he, he worked, he founded the, the CBOE for them. So he was the first guy that was brought in for uh, the CBOE and um, the CBOE yeah. started in 1975 and that's where I got my start, where he's like, all right, get in the pits. And I'm like, I'm 15 years old. He's like, get in there. <laughs> he's like, get in there. And um, that, You come from a long line of loggers. Yeah. Get in the pit. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, uh, but there's, there's, there's some great paintings and there's great photographs of, um, you know, the global markets with the yellow jackets. And that was, that was his idea. And uh, I was very proud of my father. And, and, you know, I was kind of a slacker for a long time. And by the time he passed, uh, you know, he was very proud of me. You know, it's like, I was like, I'm like, I'm going to figure out price action. And this is what I'm going to do. And he was like, wow, man. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, look, the strat's badass. I'm like, I did it. I did it. And like, it took me years. I'm like, I mean, like most traders, I blew out, got killed, and then stuck with it. And be like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm like, I'm not going to go sell real estate. I'm not going to do anything. I'm like, I'm going to figure this out if it's the last thing I ever do. And one of the greatest credits too is like, you know, you might have bad times like an ex-wife, but my ex-wife, I spoke in um, Boca one time. She came down, she lives in St. Augustine. She came down with her husband and I, I was explaining to people, I'm like, how did you start? I'm like, by getting killed. I'm like, and then what did you do? And I'm like, I got... I would look at 3,000 charts a day. I'm like, I'm like, and I wouldn't try to analyze it. I'd say, I need to figure this out. This needs to just get into my brain, and eventually something will come. And it took me 20 years, but she was in the back, and she was like, yep, you did that. Yes, you definitely did that. He definitely, definitely did that. <laughs> like, he definitely so you're self-taught. You didn't go the institutional route. You didn't sit on a on the trading floor or a trading desk. You weren't a sales and trading specialist. Yes. You, you're self-taught. So my belief was wow. total immersion in the charts. Eventually, something will come to me because, you know, people will say, you know, what's a good year, you know, investing and say 10% is a good year, 15, great, 20, 30, whoa. And I was like, there's stocks that do that every single day. I'm like, all I got to do is be right on two days and scratch the other days. And I'm going to crush everything. And I was like, so there's got to be a commonality to what happens, what, what these look like before it happens. Outside of earnings gaps and stuff like that, things that actually open flat and then move. And that was really the basis of my study. I was like, all right, well, there's got to be something here. And it took me 20 years, but I figured it out. And it's continuity, it's actionable signals, and so we're, we're doing it on short-term time frame as well as quarterly and, and yearly signals where most people, a, a big mistake for people, for traders, is only looking at dailies and intradays. And be like, well, that's all I look at. I'm like, all right, well, if your signals work on those, 
they should work on longer-term time signals. And if they work on longer-term time signals, then you could have the whole year to go after. Like last year, Ford, to us, was a two down, two up year over 950, right? There's 100, 135%, 145%. Well, you didn't have to do anything after that. There was also ads to that. And so what the strat does is it customizes itself to each trader, all right? So there'll be people that are looking for 401ks to build. They'll be looking at day traders and say, okay, it's all very similar. It's a matter of what time frame are you looking at and what are you actually looking to gain? One of the biggest mistakes that people have, or one of the biggest drawbacks that people have is not being able to gauge how far something's going to go. And so I want to make sure I'm in the, in the camera. <laughs> so, so magnitude. This, that's very relevant. Blaine's been talking about right now, letting trades right. run, yeah. play how out, and magnitude. having an issue trusting that. How far is something going to go? And so, what you'll, I mean, every trader said this. I got out too early. And the reason they did is they didn't know how far it was going to go. They didn't know how to gauge magnitude. So, you'll also hear people say, I called it. And be like, I bought this, and I said it's going there, and it went there, and I'm selling my last piece, right? I'm like, no, if it's going up there, I want to be as long as I've ever been. I'm not selling stock. I'm like, but like, because they don't know. I'm like, if it's going from here to there, I want to be as long as I've ever been when it gets there, not selling on the way up, right? I want to be buying more, right? How do we correct right. this? So what how we do, do we is this? understanding how price action works. The strat, all right? So if you're new to the strat, and I'm going to assume that a lot of people listening to me are, and I'm sorry if I keep looking up, but you're, you're up here and you're down there. <laughs> but, good. Um, if you're new yeah. to the strat, from one bar to the next, there's only three things that could possibly happen, right? We call them scenarios, right? So you can either have a scenario one, Inside bar wasn't strong enough to take out the previous high, wasn't strong enough, weak enough to take out the previous low. That's a consolidation. Nobody can argue that, right? That definitely happened. You couldn't take out the high bill lows. Yep. Scenario two. Wait, qu question. Yes. We're talking about all candles on all, all time, time frames. frames. And that's why that's okay. why you always want to have at least four time frames up, right? That's one of the, okay. one of the biggest problems people have is that they only look at a daily or an intraday. But you want to have bigger time frames for bigger moves. But you have to have, there's nothing that could possibly differentiate from this, right? You are either an inside bar. That's a one. You couldn't take out the highs or the lows. That's a consolidation, right? No question about it. Scenario two, and this is going to be very important, especially right now this week. Because one of the things I've always said, I'm like, I want everything I've said to be documented, right? The scenario two means that you either took out the highs or the lows of the previous bar, period. That happened, right? And so one of the things I like to use with my hand, scenario one, scenario two. If you've ever made a little bit, made a little bit, made a little bit, then got killed and gave it all away, that's a scenario <laughs> Every That's day. a scenario three. <laughs> Outside bar. Took out the highs and the lows. One, two, three. <laughs> right? got, got that? That's the <laughs> one that takes all your money, right? Or makes you all the money because we know that exists. Outside bars exist, which means that on a shorter term time frame, that's a broadening formation, which people will tell you is rare, which is not rare. It happens all the time. So, if you look at a monthly chart of the SPY, that happened four times in the last five months. And so what happens is if you fail to and say, okay, I'm going to take out the previous range is high, but then start jacking back down, you're going outside bar. Definitely. And so one of the things that we look at is called time frame continuity. All right. And what that means is that we want to look at what are the buyers and sellers doing? Who's the more aggressive 
And what that means is, let's say we use benchmark monthly, weekly, daily, and 60 minute, okay? So let's say that every bar is, as it was in January, is below the opening of the month, the below the opening of the week, below the opening of the day, and below the opening of 60, the sellers are more aggressive. They're hitting the bid. They're not sitting on the offer. They're hitting the bid. Also, what we know that 70 or more percent of trading is now automated. So when people say, all goes are picking me off, I'm like, no, no, no. They're telling you what they're doing. Because you have to tell a program four things. You have to tell it what vehicle, Apple, Spy, whatever it is. Do you want it to buy or sell? How do you want to buy or sell? Do you want to stay in the bid? Do you want to take the offer? Are you going to hit the bid? What are you going to do? Right? And when do you want it to do it? So, when you have these four things going your way, we know exactly what they told them. They told them to spy, they told them to sell, they told them to hit the bid, and they told them to do it now. Right? We know that. Right? And so we can pick up on algorithmic activity and jump the gun on them. Also, because everything trades in a series of broadening formations, which is these threes that we know about, what you want is to come back through a previous range where people say that if you go into new highs, it's clear blue skies. I'm like, no, 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 that's profit-taking land. You want to come back to, through a previous range because let's say like this week after a big sell-off, almost everything's a two-up on the week. If you think it's going down, you're out of your mind. So it was going up. But when you come back through a previous range, we know that not only is algorithmic activity buying, are people buying, are they taking the offer, but they're coming through, back to a previous range, which also means people are getting stopped out. Do you, want, do you know why? Because they're stopped against where they got in, they're stopped off against obvious pivots, which turns them into buyers, right? They're, sell, they're, they're short, but that turns them into buyers, therefore, when you have algorithmic buyers and people trying to buy, what that does is it re removes liquidity. These guys can't get the stock because it's, get, it's just like slippage. So, so I want to make sure I'm in the camera. <laughs> it's, like, it's like slippage. So the stops are going off. So the, the, these guys are trying to buy, but there's slippage because of stops, which are turning them into buyers. And that's why you're going to see faster things move back to the previous range. And that's what you're seeing right now. If you look at the SPY or almost anything, Qs, what you're going to see on the weekly basis was two down, two up. And we knew that this week, right? We knew that. And almost everything's doing that. And we have a lot of earnings coming out. And the wild card was SMH, right? That, that was difficult because it's, it's got some range to go. But we knew AMG is coming out today. I haven't seen that. I had to leave, the office was a mess, but, <laughs> but what you want to see is that the market is going to trade in the direction of the most twos and failed twos going three, period. That's it. I, and I do this all the time. I run a scan and I show people how to scan. And I'm like, you don't have to guess. Like when people are like, oh, I think it's going to roll over. I'm like, no way. There's no, like yesterday, no way. Everything's a two-two up on the week, reversal. Everything's a or a daily. So, and I know people knew the strat, that's going to be a little confusing, but it's, 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 it's important to understand that we all already know what winning and losing trades look like, all right, based on the scenarios and continuity, all right? Winning trades are twos in your direction with continuity, failed threes going two, right? A one, two in your direction. And losing trades are fighting continuity, twos against you, where people are trying to bottom pick. You can do it, but you need to two two back up. And that's what you're seeing in the weekly spy right now. And I want to pontificate and take totally over, but uh, it's important that people understand this uh, because tactical analysis failed. And there's no two ways about it. Failed. It was like it had 100 years of people saying, oh, this is a thing, and that's a thing, and that's a thing. Well, then how come 90% of lose, traders lose? It failed. And that's just, just no two ways about it. So you want to be cut and dry, what buys look like, what sells look like, and then do that. And 
most importantly, risk management. That's it. I mean, you get out of your losers fast. That's it. <laughs> and, you, and you want to add to your winners. Where people are like, I'm going to dollar cost average. I'm like, an old friend of mine used to say, if you dollar cost average correctly, eventually you own the company. <laughs> like, it's like, it doesn't work that way. I'm like, where Kramer will say, you know, that, you know, as long as the story's still good, you can buy on the way down. I'm like, and you know what happens? Then the story changes. <laughs> You're like, oops, boom, dog, right? So you want to get out of your losers fast, as soon as you possibly can. Be like, this is not working. It's not, you know, and a lot of people, one of the analogies I use, right, a lot of traders will do this, is it's like being a bus stop. It's like you, you, you go through the charts and you say, okay, well, here's my two best ideas. One goes up, one goes down. You know what most traders will do? They'll sell their winner to pay for the loser and hope the loser comes back. And you know how crazy that is? That's like being at a bus stop, getting on the bus. It's taking you where you want to go. But you get off it, freaking out, you thinking it's going to go back the other way. And you get on a bus going the wrong way, hoping it's going to turn around and go back the right way. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's wrong. It's like you get out of your loser, you stick with your winner, and add to it. So there's a little... All right, so set break here because two things. I don't want to interrupt you because I'm just on the edge of my seat of what you're going to say next or what analogy you're, you're going to use, and I like them a lot. But, Blaine, how are you feeling? How are you feeling about the strap? So are I'm, you overwhelmed? I'm, Do you have questions? No, I'm not overwhelmed. I mean, I kind of feel like it could be pretty life-changing. Like, okay. it's real – sounds real simple-ish. I mean, I – I hope that's not insulting. It just like it, you know how I always talk on the podcast about it. If this, then that system, Correct. it's yep. one of those. And, you know, I love one of those. Um, and then just last night I was on a rant about uh, risk management, as you know. Yep. So I'm feeling good. I, I okay. uh, can't wait to hear awesome, more. Awesome. So it also check. comes down to probability. Right? Why would this work? You always have to, you know, most traders are using things that are subjective. And so even when they're right, they're white knuckling it. Like, uh, you know, it's like, you want to know why, why would this work? How can I heighten my probability? Okay? So there's something called a simultaneous break. And what that means is that you're going to have a high concentration of signals in the same direction, either by sector or by time. Okay, let me clarify that. So what you've seen in January, you saw a high concentration of twos to the downside in growth tech, right? What is that telling me? That's telling me that institutions are selling growth, period. They, they didn't care what the stock was. They're not picking a stock. They're selling it all. Conversely, what was the number one performer? Not only today, but in January, energy, energy, almost every stock in energy was up in January. What does that tell me? That tells me it's a simultaneous break, which means that all the signals were to twos were to the upside, 90, 95%, if not higher in January. What does that tell me? That tells me that institutions were buying energy across the board. They weren't saying, I like Exxon, I like Chevron. They said, we're going to buy it all, right? Even rig, <laughs> like even rig was up, right? That's how, so that tells me institutions are buying anybody that has a drop of oil. Is that important to know? Certainly is, because that means that we can look for signals to the upside in all of them, move our stops up, and then by the end of the month, all we are is long and strongest. That's it. We didn't get stopped out in these, and they made it, right? And so this happens all the time, and this is a real focus that we have, simultaneous break. How many of these things are doing this? And so what you're seeing right now, this week, if you go on one, two, three system, right, to tell you what's going on, almost everything is a two up on the week. That's what happened on, on yesterday on Monday. And then that continued today. So there was a few that went two, two down, right? Like Johnson, Johnson, a few, healthcare, right? So we knew 
that today they were selling health care. We can go after that. But for the most part, on the weekly basis, when things occur matters. Right? This is the first day of the month. All right? So obviously you had these big down drafts in January, but now you got a new month. All right? That's important because now we want to know what are they thinking coming into and what are they doing coming into the new month. Right? And they went back in energy again. And we knew that. And so when you go to the macro signals, and I put out a macro video once a month, if you go to the macro signals, that's one, two, inside year to the upside, XLE, Exxon, all these, all these things we knew about. Them. And the great thing about that, like I said, when things occur, those things trigger the first day of the year. Boom, energy. And so as, as January sold off with the NASDAQ and the growth stocks on uh, the fears of heightened rates, anytime the market was flat, energy just ran. Ran, ran, ran. And a lot of people try to bottom pick without knowing what they're doing. They feel like they're chasing when things are going up. It's a matter of just knowing how to get in on that and saying, oh, I'm going to get in on this. Things are going up. And if they go against me, I stop out. That's fine. But you want to go with the trend. Most traders, are tendency is to fight the trend. Say, I'm going to wait for it to get way overbought, and I'm going to short it. I'm going to wait for it to get way oversold, and I'm going to buy it. Wrong answer. You want to know what does it look like before it does that. I want to buy something before it gets way overbought. Because when you do that, traders that do that, all you're doing is making money off of the profit-taking of people that made a lot more money than you did. All right? That's it. Right? We want to be the guys that make a ton of money, and then – let the scalpers make some money off of us when we get out, right? As opposed to that that's your business. And, you know, every trader's different, and that's okay. I mean, if you make money doing that, you make money, you know, I'm always happy with anybody that's profitable and is happy with what they're doing. What I'm trying to do is prevent losers and help people get better at winning. Irrational exuberance? When it comes to killer wine at drastically low prices, 30 to 70% off retail, and free shipping. We live for that here at Last Bottle Wines. Whether you went long or short on GameStop, you'll need a glass of something terrifically tasty. And we've got the goods. Last Bottle is a daily wine site based in Napa, California. One wine every day at Black Swan event prices, usually 30 to 70% off. Until poof, it's gone. Whether you're a pound-the-table type, think ultra-crisp, quaffable Sauvignon Blanc, or a dividend aristocrat, Burgundy, or Napa Cab, there simply is no better place to buy wine on the web. And they always have free shipping. Last Bottle has a deal just for Penny Lane listeners. Use promo code PENNY, that's P-E-N-N-Y, to save 10% off your next order with Last Bottle. The code is good for one order and one order only, and it expires March 11th, 2022. So head over to lastbottlewines.com today. That's lastbottlewines.com. Question for you. I don't want to <clears throat> overanalyze or, or get too granular. You had mentioned as you started, you're looking at four, four or five kind of time frames. But what we were just talking about, it sounded like the example was more kind of day over day. So are you taking swing trades or, or is there a particular type of trade? I mean, I, again, I'm assuming this works for all time frames, but it kind of sounded like we were talking about kind of swing trading versus day trading. Is that oh, fair or no? So we call the swing traders the tank division. And so with the macros, I'm like, I'm like, this is still good. XLE is an inside year to the upside. We got that all year. Ford was a 2-2 last year. And so there'll be people that stay on that. And uh, there'll, there'll, there'll be people that trade the one-minute chart all day. And so the strat customizes itself to who individuals are. So when I – Talk to people. I'm like, I need to get into your mind. Who are you? What are you trying to do? Right? And, you know, there'll be a lot of times where people are just like, I'm just trying to make some money. I'm like, or I'm just trying to make some extra money. Or, you know, I want to do this for a living. Everybody's different. And so uh, I come on for an hour on Mondays uh, after the close. And I'm like, all right, I need to figure out who you are because I can help you. I just, not, I just need to know who you are. You know, what does your mind do and what do you think? Because every, every trader is different, you know, and, and it's one of the biggest faults, too, 
is traders trying to be like other traders. Like, I'm going to follow him. I'm going to do all his trades. I'm like, no, 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 no. What he does is probably not suitable for you, right? This guy's got $10 million. This guy's whatever he is. But who are you as an individual? How do you think, right? And, you know, what do you have? And what are you trying to do here? And that's one of the most important things about training people in the strat is, you know, because people come to the chat and they're like, I want to be like Rob. I'm like, you don't want to be me, dude. <laughs> like, you just trust me. I'm like, you don't want to be me. I'm like, because what I do is might not be suitable for you. And I'm dealing with, you know, hundreds of people being like, all right, no, you do this, you do this. And suiting them with people that are similar to them and be like, all right, here's the guys that do this. Here's the guys that do this. Here's the guys that do this. And don't try and be a hero, you know, if, if that's not you. And, you know, and slowing it down one of the most important things I've taught people is about patience. You know, people come in, one of the biggest mistakes you can make is pouring through, being desperate and pouring through charts all weekend. You come in on Monday morning, you're like, yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Monday morning, we do the least. <laughs> like, sit down. Like, we want to see what they do. And then these guys get chopped up. And they might be right, but by the time it works out, they're already chopped up. You know, it's like Tuesday is much better. Um, I want to go back real quick. Yeah. I keep dragging us backwards. I'm sorry, Rob. But question is, whether you're talking about play one or play two, we alluded to risk management. How does that work itself into one and two, right? Not three, okay. but okay. one and two. Yeah. When you're talking about risk management, raising right. stops, I'm et cetera. Tight stop. Real tight. And I teach one penny below the bid when I buy or teach one penny above when I short. And the reason I do that is that because the strat is telling you what algorithmic activity, what the participants are doing, I expect this to work like that. Not a bunch of wiggle room. It should work right now, right? So I also will tell you that when you have simultaneous break like yesterday, you can loosen it up. It's like there's no way the market was going down yesterday. And if you looked at the last hour, there was a – a slight sell off and then boom back to the highs. We totally expected that. There was no way that the market was going down yesterday. Uh uh. -oh. So when they sold, uh, you know, I shorted spy yesterday. <laughs> well, that was a nice move, but the, 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 the thing was you wanted to get long for the blaster at the end because we knew. Yeah. Because we knew that there was no way you were turning around the weeks or the days. Uh uh. They were all too up. And if you have a heat map, it would show you how many things were 2-2 on the week to the upside, 2-2 on the day to the upside. It'd be 95%, if not more. There's no way that that sell-off was going to hold. That was our buying opportunity. We knew it and it came in the end of the day. And so you'll hear me talk about calling a back-ender. And Friday and Monday were back-enders. And what that means is patience. You can sit there all day and a lot of times – you're going to miss trades because you're bored. <laughs> you're just like, man, this thing's doing nothing. I'm like, whoa, wait for it. Okay, now, uh, Friday was a ripper on the, on the close. Monday was a ripper on the close. And we knew. I'm like, I'm like, sit tight. Do nothing. Wait for my signal. Then I'll leash hell. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, now, now. I'm like, we got them. We got the corrective activity, but they didn't change the longer term stuff, which means that all that was doing at the end of the day was stopping out the top, the stop, the, the tight stop guys, because we know when you have a grinding market, it's very easy to keep a tight stop. And then it just, boom, once it starts hitting, people are like, oh no. And their mindset from January is like, oh no, it's going to roll over and tank again. It's like, no, nah, that, that, that was then, this is now. Boom. Off she goes. If you look at the 15 minute on SPY on Monday, that 2 2 15 or boom, and everything did that. And so when I talk about simultaneous break, if you look at, and uh, you know, I wish I was in the office to be able to show, I'm, 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 hopefully you'll have me back. But <laughs> we had the two, two, two down, two up 15 minute on everything. That was simultaneous break. I'm like, this thing's going. And was happening at the end of the day. And so 
when people say you have common options, it's a matter of when things occur, right? That was a Monday. I'm like, it's perfect because you got Monday options in SPY, and you've got less than a half an hour to go. There's no premium in those, right? So you can pay that and just be like, I'm just going to go with this. Or you can do the common and say, okay, I've made a little, but we have magnitude up there, so I can take that because I've already made the money and take half of my profits and roll it into the SPY options because that's their money. Is that even if I lose it, I still made money. I'm <laughs> like, but if I'm right, boom, off it goes. I mean, the last six minutes on Monday, it was tremendous. It was a, you know, it was a buck and a half. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a good move. I think I would like to know um, how do you add to your winners? Okay, so there's only so many ways that price can continue or reverse, period. Right? And we know that. So what we want to do is wait for what we call triangle of the eye. <laughs> and what that is, is a short-term, uh, like I was talking about Monday, a short-term correction against you. Where people will say, I want to buy on a pullback. It's like, no, you want to buy on a reversal of a reversal. What I mean about that is that let's say something's running up, running, running, running. I don't want to change it. I'm not, I'm not just going to buy it plain and simple. I want to buy it on a pullback. It's like, well, you want to define that. And what that is, when it comes back down, so what you're going to have is like a two up, two down reversal against you coming down. But the longer term is still good. Right? That's just a short term. Then you look for the two down, two up. Right? And we buy it off of that. Or inside bar and back up. And the reason that we want to do that is... Because we know outside bars exist, that you take out one side of the range and the other side, right? So one of the things I'll stick with new people on is two two reversals on a sixty or thirty minute on a gap. Why? Because let's say that you're two up, right? Then two down. There's your reversal. But then you get a two back up. Being able to gauge your magnitude is that you're going to take out the highs of the original bar before the, the first two. I don't be slow on this okay. because it's important because why, why would that happen? Because outside bars exist. And, and so software is going to present the way it wants to, right? So what that means is it, it could be an outside bar, but it might not be an outside bar on the software, right? But we know that that phenomenon exists because it's not a pattern, it's a phenomenon. And what I mean about that, to make it a little clear, I know that's probably going to be a little foggy for a lot of people. But what I want to say is that all software, all charting software, every charting software, their 30-minute updates at the top of the hour and the bottom of the hour, right? Everything. It does. We have something called a sideways 30. Now... If your software updated at 15 and 45, that chart would look different. So we know to use our minds to see what it would be if it updated at those times because it's still a 30-minute period, right? We call that a sideways 30, right? Most people don't know this either. You know, Dan Oshman, when I met him, he, CEO of TrendSpider, that put my signals in his uh, software after I met him, the first question I met him, when I met him, I was like, does your 60-minute update at the top or the bottom of the hour? He's like, nobody's ever asked me that. And I was like, he's like, bottom of the hour, right answer. So what that means is that you don't want to read a chart. You want to analyze data. What are they doing? What are they, what are they doing? That's, that's the whole cost of what I'm doing is like, what are they doing? What are the institutions doing? What are the big boys doing? What are the... What are they doing, right? We want to be on top of that, right? I don't want to read a chart. I want to analyze data. So when you use time from continuity, they are buying or they are selling, and they are aggressive or they are not, period. And when you have the simultaneous breaks, they're buying everything. And that's where you go because patience is the key. So many people have, they just come in and they're like, I'm a trader, I got to trade. I'm like, mm, 
I'm just going to sit back here. I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And then once, once you get your sweet spot, then know how to cross your sweet spot. Period. Right? Because <laughs> if, if you're just sitting there scalping and be like, I make this, I make a little, I make a little, I make a little. Like, know your sweet spot. If you've ever seen some of the most successful traders or companies, they've waited. And sometimes it's years. <laughs> like, but for the most part, it's knowing your sweet spot and knowing how to kill that. Knowing to get out of your losers immediately. Because what that's going to do, it's going to mentally take you down. And it's also going to keep you out of potential winners. Because you're focusing on that. Also, losers can, people tend to ignore them. And say, okay, well, like I said before with the analogy, I'm like, I'm going to take my profits to pay for this loser and hope it comes back. And then I'm going to trade other things. I'm just going to ignore it. Those are the guys that usually blow out on the lows and be like, all right, I can't take it anymore. I got to go. It's not winning. All right? Because another thing about staying in your winners, right, is that oftentimes people will also take profits because they're bored, just sitting there doing nothing. Like today when the market was up, sitting there doing nothing, people will take profits because they're bored. And I'm like, still good. This is still good. Because just like, Losers tend tend to get worse. Winners tend to get better. And so, if you can just if you stick it out and say, "Okay, I'm it's, I'm not getting out just because I'm bored," it's like it's still good. You know, it's one of the most important things uh, that I do with people. I'm like, they're like, "Well, you know, I got to go to lunch and blah blah blah." I'm like, still good. I'm like, you put a stop on there, and if they take you out, that's one thing. But don't sell just to sell. It's still Good, it's still good. That makes sense. Letting it run. Yeah. So my question would be more along the lines of where are you coming up with these? So it's it's one thing to study charts like like you talked about, right? Hours and hours and hours and hours. Are you looking macro first? Like, again, if you're looking for that rotation and then you start to hone in on some of the bigger names with higher volumes, or could you have a different play in a different sector pretty much any time if you see the yeah, right Yeah, so everything, you know, you've heard the term turnaround Tuesday, right? Everything acts like that. Everything needs to confirm or negate what just happened, right? So, you can have, uh, you know, these, these macros, the long-term stuff, but you're always going to be looking at what is everything doing on the year? What's everything doing on the quarter? What's everything doing on the month? What's everything doing on the week? What's everything doing on the day? What's everything doing on the 60, right? And you can trade that 60 because if everything's going to change, it's going to start off that 60, right? It's that, that would change. That would do it, right? So, it, like I said, it customizes yourself. 60 is a major signal, but what you always want to look at is, is like playing pool, all right? You don't just go up there and knock the ball into the pocket, right? You leave yourself a setup and say, okay, if I hit this, then I can hit that, right? So what you want to look at is if this works, what will it leave me? And say, okay, this is going to work. And if it, what's, what's going to leave me? I'm like, okay, if I do this, then it'll set up the weekly break. It'll set up the monthly break, reconfirms this, does this, right? As opposed to just the straight sniper of like, all right, boom, into the pocket. I'm like, all right, that's it. And there's, there's traders that are like that. And that that's fine. Um, but ideally, I want to, where people will say that I'm just day trading. I don't need to look at longer term charts. I'm like, well... You do because I want to make sure that if I'm right, I'm real right, right? This thing's going, like when they say mooning, <laughs> like this thing's going, it's like if I'm right, this is breaking the monthly, this is doing everything. If it look like uh, BROS, the bros, one of the few things that's trading over last month's highs, right? Just like when we had the pandemic, that what happened there was, if you pull up monthly charts, is that everything got crushed in March. Crushed, right? But then we had April, which was a new quarter, 
and everything and everything started to rally back, all right? And at that point, what we wanted to do, because everything got crushed in March, was buy anything taking out the March highs. Why? Anybody short that stuff, got what they wanted, the market got crushed. But now, anybody short it in there, they're underwater. We're always trying to trade against people that are underwater. And you had names like Amazon, you had Wayfair. The pandemic was actually good for them, right? So these guys were really scrambling, right? They're really scrambling. And if you look at those charts, the two, two months going into April last year, then you also had the SPY was an inside month in April, but huge green. And that was a 212 inside bar reversal to the upside. We knew about that. So you always want to know that the direction of the market or sector, depending on what time it is, is going to trade in the direction of the most twos, failed twos going three, period. So I can scan for that, and I will know exactly what's happening. If you were to have the ability to scan how many things this week are two down, two up on the week, compared to anybody taking out last week's lows, it's not even close. And so that's why we knew yesterday for sure we're going up. Definitely. Today, there was no reason. Now, where SPY open yesterday was pretty close to being a three up. Well, three has to go outside. It has to go take out the low number. It was, cl I know it didn't open there, but I was just looking at it. It had closed. Well, I, it, it, you know, it, it wasn't there, but it was no, pretty that's close. That's why, that's now, why it you started. Do a macro video. Over the weekend for the new month, I didn't do that because there were so many things that were close to 2-2 reversals to the upside on, on the week. And I was like, I don't want to yeah. get anybody tra trapped on any quarterly downers. I was like, these babies going 2-2 on the upside. And so you have that in the queues, the spy, so many things. We knew that was pro probable. And then the, the wild card is earnings and SMH, which was nowhere near doing that. But if, I don't know what AMD did this afternoon, but if that goes 2-2, boom, we're going straight up. Also, Tuesdays are important because, and it's not just turnaround Tuesday, it's, it's like I said, every second period of whatever you're watching. And so on a Tuesday, what I want to know is, what did they do on Monday? And did they come back and do it again on Tuesday? Or did they reverse them? So a two, two turnaround Tuesday would be a two in one direction, to the other, right? That's a problem. But when I can see a two in one direction to the upside and they do it again on Tuesday, that tells me I've got pretty aggressive buyers. I want to keep an eye on that because they came in on Monday, they bought. They came in on Tuesday, they bought again. If they're going to buy all week, that's what it's going to look like, right? And so we can look at sector, we can look at stock, whatever it is. But um, we're always trying to track what people are doing and who's in losing positions and have to do something. If you're in a winning position, you don't have to do anything. If you're in a losing position, you got to do something, right? And that's why the 2-2 two -two reversal is important because if you're in a losing position, you got to do something. You either got to get out, you've got either got to balls up and try and add, or you just ignore it. And But you got to do something. And that's why we like to watch the gaps because when you watch a gap, you know that there's, there's big winners and there's big losers, right? And watching gaps is important because if you have a gap in reverse, there's people that were long or whatever, let's say it's upside, they're long, and they're seeing their P&L evaporate, right? These guys are all hit and sell. <laughs> Get me out of this thing. It's coming all the way back, right? So... The psychology of it is always important because the longer you trade, the more situations you've been in, right? And so you know how you think, which means you know how they think, right? And take advantage of that and say, all right, I've been in this situation. Here's what I would do. Here's what most people would do. And then take advantage of it. Something, I came in long, it's earnings. And it starts to puke. <laughs> and you're like, everybody's hitting sell at the same time, right? They're like, just get me out. I want to just take my profits. And it starts to puke, right? 
So the psychology of this game is very important. And the longer you've been in it, and the more you can distance yourself from yourself to recognize what other people are going to do and a herd psychology, then you know how to maximize on that. You'd be like, these guys, these guys are puking at war, or they're screwed, and they and that's where you get the gap and go. You'd be like, the guys that are short are so screwed. This thing is not going down. It's not coming in. What are they going to do? I'm like, they're slowly covering if they're smart or if they're selling into it, it's just making it worse. And um, that's where the strat comes in to understand exactly what participants are doing. Uh, are they buying? Are they taking the offer? Or are they hitting the bid? And where are the, we're using participants against each other and saying, okay, when let's say that something's dropping and it's taking out a daily low 2-2 two, two down, 2-2 two, two weak. The analogy I use there is the porch collapsing. It's like, all right, here's where the porch collapses. All oh, these guys go underwater here. Here's a bigger porch. See that? This is going to take that out. When that takes that out, all oh, these guys go underwater. They got to do something, right? Also, if you have time for continuity, the algos are hitting the bed, which means the next porch Boom, they're taking it all out. Then when you go into lower lows, you go into exhaustion risk. And what exhaustion risk means is that that when you come you want to come back to a previous range because you're gonna stop people out. But once you go into highs or lows, then the buyers and sellers have to be aggressive and, and keep going because you don't have that advantage of stopping people out anymore. Right? You stopped everybody out, they're gone. Right? And um, so as you'll see over time that going back to the previous range is what you want, right? You want those people to be getting stopped down, right? And of, of course, you're always going to have guys who are shorting into new highs or whatever it is, but, but you don't have that larger participation group to take out, is what I'm saying. So that's why I say once you go into new highs, then we don't know. Once you go into new lows, then I don't know. I love it. I'm a big advocate about the herd mentality, about if the market's already there, you're, you're, you're behind or you're late. I'm, it, it, it just makes the most sense. Like you talked about, if you know what your mindset is, then you know what their mindset is. Uh, and that's crucial. I think that is, it's really important. It's also what really gamifies stock market. It's really kind of what. Right. What so we want to use the muscle point. that works for us. And like, I, I'm not the muscle, dude. I'm like, I'm like, I want to use the muscle. I'm like, the muscle's doing this. I'm like, we're with them because they don't like us to know what they're doing. And it's like, I, I like to call them Sasquatches. I'm like, they're big, they're fast, they're strong, and they get pissed when you find out what they're doing. I'm like, but let the Sasquatches do the heavy lifting. I'm like, these guys are buying, and they're, they, they don't care. And you know, if you've never been on an institutional trading desk or anything like that, You'll have people be like, well, who the hell would buy this here? And I'm like, disaggressively. I'm like, guys, you got a lot to buy. I'm like, you get a buy order that says, I'm like, Merrill Lynch wants you to buy 10 million shares of this in the next quarter. Well, you might go gangbusters on your first 2 million because you know you've got so much more to buy. And then so you see this big spike. And you're like, we're taking this thing higher, dude. <laughs> like, I'm like, this thing's going higher. I'm like, they don't think it is. They know it is. Right? <laughs> like they know it is because they got a huge buy order. Um, so understanding all the different types of participants is important because, you know, most traders will think in terms of everybody's like them. Everybody's just a trader. And I'm like, that's, that's not true. You might have Fidelity that says, I need 10 million shares of this stuff. Right? And uh, I'm like, 10 million? I'm like, yep. And I'm like, and I need it by this time. Where if you're a broker or you're working for them or you're working in the firm and they're running the algo, being like, we need 10 million shares. I'm like, it's like, what about the price? I want to get it cheaper. They're like, we don't care. I'm like, oh, we need stock, dude. I'm like, and that's 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 what you'll see in, in, in a lot of things. And you know, we want to pick up on that because they're not happy if we figure that out. Be like, all right, we're gonna silver surfer right with you. <laughs> like, oh, we, we love you. you know? <laughs> we, we love you. Thank you. And that's, and that's what you'll see 
where when I talk about time frame continuity, it's like one of the things I'll always say is we like nice long red and green bars. You know why? They tend to get greener and redder. <laughs> like, and if they don't, we get out. Right? So like in the middle of the day, if something's still an inside day or doing nothing, out. By Wednesday, if you're not moving on the week, out. Nothing. Second month, second week of the month, if you're not doing anything, because we know, just like many traders will say, I got out too early. I'm like, ah, no, yeah, yeah, you did. I'm like, we want to get on the board where things are happening. It's like, if this is going, I'm like, momentum, yeah. get in there. If it stops, get out. <laughs> that's, that's it. But where most many traders will say, I got out too early, I'm like, that's when I got in. <laughs> you, you got out and sold it to me because I say, this thing's really going. And if it stops, I'm out. But right now, this thing, as far as I know, this thing, these guys are going gangbusters here, and I'm in. I want to talk about or just ask about your stop loss. So it's essentially at break. Yes, real tight. And, and so okay. what we'll do is, you know, I teach that because, when I, when I've got, you know, when I teach people, I'm like, I'm going to make sure people don't get killed when I teach people what I'm doing. I'm like, don't get killed. You might get chopped up. That's fine. But I have to know your understanding of what we're doing, right? And so for myself, I know that I can loosen it up during periods of simultaneous break. And sometimes I mean, people would get almost annoyed with me for my patience. And I was like, nah, mm, nah, no, no, no. Because I know. When it's time to dogpile, it's time to dogpile. Now. Nah. And so when I'm on the headset talking to people, I'm like, I'll be like, nah, maybe yeah, it could work, and that's going to do that. But then they know when I'm like, it's on now. <laughs> and like yesterday, I'm like, there's no way the market was going to sell off outside of what we got at the end of the day. And I was like, wait for it. This will do it. But the market will trade in a direction. If you had a heat map, of how many twos are in the same direction, that'll tell you what's going on, period, right? And people are like, oh, I'm scared it's going to roll over and all that kind of stuff. So stop losses, because the strat is very precise, can be very tight, um, simply because we know what's happening. If we, if we get stopped out, or the hardest part for people is to get back in. Because a lot of people will say, you know, oh, it didn't work out. I'm moving on to my next setup. And I'm like, no, no, still good. I mean, if this is things triggers again, get back in. Call that doing bad, right? And that can be hard mentally for a lot of people. Be like, all right, man, I got stopped out twice. And I'm like, mm, hold on. We have unknown participants, but that'll play out. Okay, now, third time. And that's where, you know, like, a lot of people will need hotkeys. If you're pointing and clicking, it's very hard mentally to do that, to get back in a third time, right? But if you have hot keys, you just go, boom. It's like, got my tight stop, it's got my buy. Stop that. Boom, hit it again. Okay, ready? Hit it again. If we have every reason to believe that's going to work, you keep going after that, right? we got an unknown participant in there, but we're going to chew through him and go, right? So back to the psychology thing. It's like it's very hard for people to – point and click, and say, I'm going to try it again. Very hard, right? So we want to eliminate that as best we can. Hotkeys do that, you know, because if you got to sit there and keep pointing and clicking, it's exhausting. Uh, it's just uh, it's just tough. It's just tough to do. And like I said, it's like most traders will say, it didn't work, and I'm going to move on to my next setup, and blah, blah, blah. But if we have a setup that's good, we do battle. And that's it's it's hard, but uh, I'll get a, I'll get them in there. I'm <laughs> like, do battle. Like we are going to win this. We're just getting we got an unknown participant. He's going to go away because of all the other things we know. Eventually, the big boy's going to muscle this guy right out. But that's how. What's your win rate? Well, the thing about oh, lost my dad's thing here. The thing about the strat is like you know. Like I said, everybody's different, and it's like you'll—I don't know if you know Jim Bradley—and Jim only had 
14 losing days in the last two years and trades less, like less than a minute. But what I will tell people is the strat is more about, um, is more about if, if you know baseball. It's not about your winning average, your batting average. It's about your slogging average. What that means is when we're right, we're real right, right? The things really go. And that's, that's, that's more important because you're going to stop out. That's going to happen. But you don't want to be that person that gets out too early. You want to be that person that adds to the things that are really working and staying in those things that are really working. That's really important. Not getting out of your winners. Let these things that are winning play out, right? Because you can have you can have eighty percent losers, but if that 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 twenty percent, gone, it's just gone, right? And that's really important. <laughs> it's really important to know slugging average, not batting average. However, there will be, like I said, there's all different types of strategies. And there'll be people that just sit there and be like, they have, like Jim Bradley, like, high rate. Be like, that's what I do. More often than not, um, they're not the biggest winners with the strat. The biggest winners are usually the, the people that stick with the, with the trend and, and say, okay, this is gone, right? Once we're gone, add, 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 add. So everybody's different, but... <laughs> Your losses are small. I mean, if your stop is as That's tight right. as it is, right? It's not like the loss. I mean, you may have, you could have quite a few losses if a f- quite a few trades go against you. But on aggregate, the dollar amount of that, right? Is nothing, Especially right once they so. eliminated, you know, many places eliminated commission. I mean, commission used to be the killer, yeah, right? And if you don't have that, and right. there'll be people that focus on only purely liquid stuff and say, okay. Now I can I can have you know and everybody's not trading Amazon naked and all that kind of stuff you know they're like no I only trade MU and Intel and stuff like that so I know I have a penny spread right I know it's liquid I know I can get right out and we expect to win right away it's kind of like uh, home run derby in baseball too it's like all right I can foul balls off but once I get a hold of one boom this thing's gone and I know to add to it right. Be like this. Once you get a hold of one, and be like, "We got it." Where's it going? Up oh, there. Here's the broad information series. Here's the simultaneous break. Anytime that we get a small term, a shorter term correction, and then a reversal back up, would add to it, pour it on. Um, I think that's one of the important things. Many important things is most people don't pour it on once they got they got something going. Right, they'll take they'll take partial yeah. profits. I mean, once it's going, more, more, and like I'm like I want more of this stuff, dude. This thing's going my way. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna sell some out. I'm like, no, I want more because when you sell, especially if you hit the bid, you're letting somebody out that needs this trapped, right? I want to pour it on. I want to put the heat on these guys. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, here's where's the carrot going? Up here, boy. You want <laughs> up here, boy? I'm like, boom. Pour it on. This thing's winning. I'm also playing with house money. And that's one of the important things about managing your winners and cutting your losers is that I want to play with house money. It's their money. It's not mine. It's like, it's, and people will say, well, it technically is. And I'm like, all right, but I'm at no risk of being at a loss. Right? No risk. I'm not, not close. I'm like, pour it on. I want more of this stuff. Right? And that's where... You invert the, I got out too early, to, I just made a ton. I just made a ton. I'm like, I just made a ton. I'm like, that thing kept going, and I kept buying, and I kept buying, and I kept buying. I made a ton, right? And, you know, the market's not always about making a ton of money for people. Everybody is who they are, you know? I'm like, and I'm like, not telling everybody to make millions of dollars. You know, people are happy with, 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 with what they make. That's great. What I'm showing you is, like, if you want to make more or you want to uh, be better, that's it. And that's it. Or, or even if it's not every trade, you know, even if it's not every trade, and be like, all right, well, I'm not going to do that all the time. But 
when things, something's really going and being like, all right, man, I'm already up for the month, I'm already up for the day, I'm having, you know, things are good. I'm like, let's press, let's press this. <laughs> like, and let's see what happens. I'd be like, because it's, it's already their money. I'm already up a thousand or whatever I'm up. And next thing you know, I'm up 10, I'm up 20, I'm up 30. Yeah, boy. <laughs> like, this thing's going, right? And this thing's going. Uh, because, you know, the longer you're in the business, the more you've actually seen these things happen. Where this thing's just going. <laughs> this thing's just going. This thing's not turning around, right? And be like. So, Rob, where do people, like, learn from you? Do you have a rent? I should know this. Prior to interviewing, <laughs> you have a room where you teach every day? I'm on the headset all day long at www.sepiagroup.com. I'm on the headset all day directing traffic, so I'm kind of like air traffic control. But then I do the strat time report, and that goes on my YouTube, and I tweet it out, uh, you know, what the opening, what they're doing. I make a short video every night because – the great thing about the strat is we can communicate very fast. Like my video is very rarely over three minutes. I'm like, here's the twos, here's the this, here's the that. Then one hour after the close on Mondays, I come back on to teach and coach for an hour. Then on Tuesdays, usually if it wasn't for today where there was construction going on, I do the strat attack and I put, put that on my Twitter and that's, what I'm looking for, what reversed on Tuesday, what continued, right? That's very important. That's why you let Monday open, go to Tuesday. Uh, headset all week, and then on the weekends, I make a weekend video at the YouTube, Smiths in the Black. And then once a month, I make the macro video of the quarterlies and the yearlies, stuff like that. But I'm on, I'm on the headset all day, directing traffic and um, teaching people. And, you know, I've been doing that for... Uh, 12 years or whatever, and the important part that we started off with is that everybody's an individual, and the biggest mistakes and one of the biggest losers for people in this business is, I want to be like him. I need to listen to him. I'm like, no, 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 no. Who are you? What size account do you have? You know, what, you know, what are you, what are you actually trying to do here, right? And that, like I said, customizes itself to what's going on. And the strat that I'm very proud of is changing how people see price action. So you need to understand that it's a lot easier than you think. You know, I'm not saying trading's easier. What I'm saying is that understanding is easier. It's like you are either a one, a two, or a three. That's it. Period. You have to be. And at that time, right, you are either green on the month, week, day, 60, or you're not, or you have conflict. That's it, right? And so when, once people understand that, it helps clarify price action to help them understand things much more clearly. And the problem that we've had in our business that I've set out to solve was subjectivity and being like, okay, this could be a thing. This could be a thing because that confuses the mind where people are like, oh, well, I died. Well, I'm trying to figure this. No, no, it's either one, two or three. You have continuity or you don't period. That's it. And that's what gives you confidence when you trade and say, I know what's happening. This thing, is going three. Why? Continuity said they buy it on the 60, they buy it on the daily, they buy it on the weekly, and they buy it on the monthly. And it failed two, and it's coming back. And that happened four times in the last five months in the spot. And we knew about every one of it. So confidence is what you need in trading. Being like, I know why this should work. Like, that's period. That's paramount. Like, I know why this should work. If it works, I know where it's going. Going up there. <laughs> like, are you sure about that, Rob? Yes. Because if, it, if it's not going to go there, it has to have a reversal against you. And we know what reversals look like. Two up, two down, two one, two, inside bar back down. That has to occur. Failed two going three. 
that has to occur. If that doesn't occur, you're still good. And that's how I keep people in the winning trade saying, you don't have a reversal against you. Why are you getting out? I'm like, well, you know, I'm bored and I get profits. I'm like, still good. First down. First down. First down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Rob, while we were uh, recording this podcast, you now have another subscriber on your YouTube channel. Awesome. Get subscribe, Smith in the Black on great, YouTube. Great, great, great to have you. And like, I'm so glad to be here. I'm like, and, you know, I was like, always so busy, but I'm always like, you know, I'm like, anybody wants to talk about strat, I will do it. Um, you know, I will do it. I'm going to screw up because helping yeah. people is what I do. Uh, you know, like a lot of people will be like, Oh, and I make all this ton of money and you should listen to me. And I'm like, no, no, no. Listen to me because it will make sense to you. All right. And that's what you want. Right. When it comes right. to trading, like you want something that makes sense, yeah. not follow the leader. Like, does this make sense? I'm like, that makes total sense. I'm like, okay, then now you're on your path. Now you know what to do right now. You can start to know what you do because you, if you, you know, your trading has to make sense. Right. And to me, for 20 years, it never made sense. And I'm like, I got to make sense of this. And then what's even more difficult is teaching people, right? They have, they have, they have to make sense. Like, when, you know, you'll see a lot of people saying, I called this and I called that and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, look, I've been doing this a long time. If you can't tell them exactly why to get in, exactly why it's going to work, exactly where the stop is, it's regard, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you said. They need to know exactly what to do, right? And so with the strat, you know exactly what to do. Take that 2-2 reversal. Your stop goes here. Here's going up there. You need this. This is why that's going to work. That's why that's going to work. And so some people are savants. They just get like that. Other people, it takes a while. And I'm like, that's okay. Don't worry. You're on the right path. And oftentimes, I'll keep them on like 30 and 60-minute gap list. And be like, look. If you just trade the reversals off the 30s and 60-minute gaps, that's all you need to do. But you might not trade for three days, but you might make your whole month in one hour. You know, but you got to wait. And <laughs> be like, all right, let it set up. Let it do this. And ready? Boom. And then know what to do when it happens. All right, Blaine, you got the strat? I'm real interested. <laughs> and you got it? So, so we interviewed a trader. And we're so lucky to have like a very loyal listener base and a lot of interactivity with our um, guests and our listeners and everything. And we interviewed a trader. He talked about the strat and so many people got excited about the strat that the person we interviewed the next week was like, oh, I heard that episode. Now I know everything about the strat and his profits had increased like dramatically in one week. And so what I needed was someone to explain it to me. And I'm like, I got to go to the source. I got to have the main guy explain Thanks. it to me. Um, I'm real intrigued. I think I'm going to join your Awesome. Life. No, I'm great. I was, like, I was very excited. We were like, Love it. oh, I'd like to have you on. I'm like, definitely. And because one of the things I'll, I'll say is that, that when people say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and, like, one of my favorite guys, the guy that got the fastest, Danny Bones, trader on the CBOA for 30 years. And he came and sat next to me in my office. And if you're ever in Chicago, please, anybody, please come see me in the office. It's always open. Door's always open. But he came to the office, and he's like, all right. And he sat next to me. He said nothing. And I was like, see that? That's a 2-2 reversal off of that. See that? That's a reversal there. See that? After two hours, he stood up. He's like, I get it. <laughs> it's like, it's like, and, that, and then he said, <laughs> after 30 years, I, I thought I knew how to trade. I'm like, I had no idea. Now he helps educate and trade. And it was like, but uh, that, that was really funny. So, but if you're ever in Chicago, I, mean, I always tell people, like, doors always open. Come sit next to me. We, you know, all that kind of stuff. But to, he, he can teach an old dog new tricks. It makes sense to people is what's really important. It's like, look, this makes sense. And that's why some of the some of the best people are the, the new people. Like I've never traded before. I'm like perfect, perfect. perfect. <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to rewire the brains. I don't have to do anything. I'm like perfect. Can you count to three? Can you see red or green? I'm like here's how it works. And then just listen to me. 
Like I'm on the headset and be like, listen to me. So yesterday, like the market was going, I was like, it's like, hey Rob, do you think the market's going down? I'm like, ain't no way this market's going down. No, no. Look at the sop, look at the sop, the twos on the week and the day. There's no way. So if you watch my weekend video, I talked about all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's what you want to know. What's the amount of twos in each direction? Today, you know, we got bored, but I was like, then we went out on the highs, I think. But it's like, it was like, there's no way. There's no way. It's not going down. It's like, you have to have twos against you. You have to have these things against you. If you don't have that, not going down, right? And then we'll monitor the 60-minute basis and say, okay, if we are, well, the 60s would have to break first, right? If they're going to trigger everything else, that would have to break. But if that doesn't break, ain't happening. And, have, and then the great thing is that we have also, you know, short-term options. You have SPY and Qs having Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. And so when you have these moves that's set up, uh, you know, later in the day, there's almost no premium in these things, right? And because we know how to gauge magnitude, like I said, two down, then two up is going to take out the highs of the previous, whatever was previous to that too. Then you can go to those options up there later in the day that have like no premium but if they go into the money boom you know you're up you know four or five hundred percent so you know there's a lot of ways to use that i like yeah, that right? yeah. i like that i just that's what i'm talking about i started off trading penny stocks and then uh did that for 18 months um lost a ton of money and now I'm trading options. I'm 60 days into only trading options. It's going really well. I love it. Uh, don't know if I've had a 100% option trade yet, though. I'm real cautious. Right, well. Which is what we were discussing on the podcast last Sure, week, so, so, you know I mean? Um, one of our, followers, Alex's options is really good at teaching what options to go after. And what I mean by that is like, okay, we have a buy signal, but what, what do we do here? Do we go at the money? Do, where do we go out of the money? What, 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 do we, what option do we go for? Alex is 18, and he's one of my great teachers. <laughs> like he said, he's like, you know, because a lot of times people are like, how can you listen to an 18-year-old? I'm like, I'm like, well, the strat is kind of like uh, a video game. I'm like, and if I want to learn a video game, I want to go after a teenager. Right? <laughs> like, all I can. He's really good. So, the thing is, once you understand, follow the strat, how to gauge magnitude. If we're right, where is this going to go? Up there. Right? And so, at that point, then, depending on when things occur, when things occur really matters. Right? And that's why a lot of people don't look at the bottom of their charts. Say, okay, well, I think this is going to be a breakout. I'm like, is it a Monday? Is it, is it a Friday afternoon? When is this happening? That matters, right? How much time do I have on this? And so when you have the magnitude, the broad information, the three, then you can start to look and be like, okay, I've got time, and there's no premium. And if it, and if it hits, it's going to go there. And if it hits there, that thing's going to spike, right? And be like, I bought this thing for two cents. If that works, it's going to a buck, right? And <laughs> that's something I want to know about. And you can trade the, in the money or the common to pay for it. So it's already paid for. That's what we like. We like to play with other people's money, not ours. Be like, all right, I've already got another trade that's made money in this. Then I can roll it into that with partial profits and be like, all right, even if it doesn't work, I still win. But if it does, <laughs> then that's what we like. The press, 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 or the boom. <laughs> right? And be like, all right, that's it. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. It's like, okay, I just made half of what I did make, but if I'm right, now I'm up 10 times, you know, all that kind of stuff. So money management, understanding magnitude is very important. And like I said, said before, is that most people don't understand how to gauge magnitude, how far this is going to go, and that's why they get out too early. The strat tells you that. If this is right, it's going there. If we don't have a reversal against us, it's still good. It's still going there. Don't get out. Rob, this is amazing. I'm super fired up. 
can't wait to learn more from you. Um, everything you said made sense to me. It seemed, like I said, like an if-then, then this. All about it. I'll link to all your socials in the show notes. Thank you for your time. We would love to have you back. I'd love to um, see your screens and have you walk us through it that way. Big fan. Huge fan. This was a, a refreshing podcast. And honestly, I've got my Diet Coke here. I came into this podcast a little tired. We've had kind of a grueling week here at the Penny Lane Pod. And uh, I'm not feeling that way anymore. I'm like, shouldn't have had that Coke. <laughs> Feeling amped. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for having me. I look forward to coming back and, um, you know, I like meeting new friends and um, talking shit. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, we'll schedule another one. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you yeah. for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much to our producer, Joel Edwards and Chesley Lowe for the banjo music. Guys, it's the middle of February, which means you have about one month left to use your 10% off with Last Bottle Wines. If you don't use this, I don't even know what to tell you. It's changed Justin's life. He's getting wine yesterday, today, tomorrow. The service is fantastic. You get discounts on amazing bottles of wine, pre-selected, highly rated. Guys, order the wine. When you use our sponsors, you help the podcast, and then we can really keep this thing going. Discount code is PENNY, P-E-N-N-Y. You get 10% off your order. It's good for a one-time use, and it's valid until March 11th, 2022. Last bottle wines, use it. By accessing this podcast, you acknowledge that the Penny Lane podcast makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional or financial advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, the Penny Lane podcast does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast. And information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. The third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of the Penny Lane podcast. The Penny Lane podcast assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third party materials or on third party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.